A2024 for each of the 12 signs. I'm Lada from astrolada.com and this May is such a joy compared to April. All planets are moving direct, so things will go more according to plans. There is a powerful first activation of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. So finally, what I promised you of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will start unfolding for me with the new moon in Taurus this abundance opportunities that will support you for the next 14 years you see the first signs of it materially from May then we have the Jupiter Venus conjunction mm, and the Jupiter Sun conjunction mm, this month is just beauty it smells of champagne and caviar and uh, sweet sounding melody and nymphs dancing naked <laughs> this, this has this taurian lushness and beauty of jupiter venus sign and abundance and um camaraderie so it's it's and then we have jupiter entering a new sign i'm gonna cover each of the 12 signs how jupiter will affect you for the next 12 months and of course we have mars being reborn i'm not gonna give it off but <laughs> it is exciting okay i really love this month but before we start i have created a short tutorial for hour and a half just 9.99 for each of the 12 signs whoever is interested in it uh to how each of the 12 signs their first and second marriages and how their life changes after marriage for example aries and Libra, their financial situation is intimately connected with their partnership. So it really changes for the better or worse, usually for the better. Pisces, for example, they can have property <laughs> much more easily after they get married. Or do you know that Capricorns, um, sorry, Scorpios are more likely, and Taurus are more likely to have hidden relationships or and we're talking ascendance here mostly and moon or to marry foreigners or someone from a different religion or Aquarians have a pattern of marrying someone from a different uh, country as well and I explained to you it's, it's fascinating you know that the second marriage of some signs is much better naturally inclination than the second marriage is much better than the first for other signs the first marriage would be better than the second one just because you're born under a certain ascendant anyway Thank you so much. Check it out. It's fantastic. I, it's really enjoyable. It's just $9.99 on the description below. And now let's begin. Sun, moon, rising, May 2024, the month of abundance and <laughs> absolute. Uh, this is your month and it's going to be incredible for Tauruses because all the best planets are activating your sign. Oh, there's such whiff of uh beautiful aromas richness abundance i'm gonna get to it but i'm gonna start from the beginning of the month when mars is being born mars was invisible for the last six months seven months uh, in the sky and it's finally coming out from beneath the um, rays of the sun and it's going to become visible in your 12th house from taurus and moon arising and it pretends the next year and a half where you have to use this Mars is the birth of Mars. So it gives you signs. Where is Mars energy going to be needed strongly for the next year and a half while Mars is visible? Well, it's going to be in this 12th house. Mars will give you the strength. It's being born there. It's Mars is willpower, strength, uh, soldier-like determination to tackle. What is 12th house? Some hidden vices. Vices some weaknesses of yours, some self-sabotaging behaviors, some addictions. Mars cuts with a sword. Pam, pam, cigarettes. Ah, there you go. You know, sugar, they, whatever it is, your weakness, your uh, uh, almost like unconscious pull uh, towards something that you think you has more control over you and you can cut it with the sword of Mars. Uh, another area where mars can be very powerful is that you work or you have some you have to mobilize your forces in some 12th house project which can be some charity project over the next one year and a half some project to uh 12 houses where we also keep all the waste and if you want to work well with mars like get rid of get rid of and give away 12 houses also charity of excess and waste don't keep it mars is ruthless planet it, if it's born in your 12th house it says i wanna put soldier like order here and discipline mars has a lot of discipline as well 
uh, especially do some initiatives that get rid of the waste, the wasteful behaviors, spending too much and so on, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, Mars in the 12th house can mean you spending and wasting your energy. It's like going in some well without ending. Unless you're doing it to help others, you might put a lot of efforts and energy in helping those in need, in some causes, or, I don't know, homeless animals, taking care of, you might get suddenly an urge to get mobilized to help refugees or those in need or those uh, that are less fortunate than us, which is the 12th house. Those that we almost have like a, some duty towards 12th house is almost like having the duty to help those in need, maybe giving a crying shoulder to friends of yours or whatever. But Mars rules your relationships. Mars is the ruler of the seventh house and it's going to be born in your 12th house. So suddenly till now relationships were invisible. When Mars is invisible, it's more unpredictable and so on. Mars being born now is, but in the 12th house can mean the birth of new relationship for some of you, maybe friendships or collaboration or sexual even relationships personal but maybe more hidden or private because mars is born in your 12th house or maybe such with a foreigner or someone with a different social class or race something that is quite different and unfamiliar to you because the 12th house is the house of unfamiliarity but maybe a connection from past lifetime there um and of course, the 12th house is the house of bed pleasures. So Mars there can, uh, you know, some fantasies, bed pleasures. It can make you more initiative there. Of course, it can turn into vice. So be careful because Mars can make you very passionate about pursuing your vices, whatever they are, and your addictions and your weaknesses that you're hiding from the world and that you are kind of embarrassed about. But because you have no power over them because Mars can ramp up first this, but also it has the power and the willpower to nip it in the bud at some point over the next year and a half. You might also be undertaking some activity that is spiritual, 12th house, or artistic, or healing of some sort. And Mars allows for quick breakthroughs if you're doing some spiritual healing or some uh, 12th house can be maybe giving you the strength to overcome some illness because 12th house is connected to that, to fight it. Mars is like a fighter to fight through some obscure illness or medical condition or gives you the strength to fight, uh, as I said, those inner demons. Sometimes the dreams might be Mars being born in your 12th house. Your dreams can be more violent where you're expressing suppressed feelings. And Mars in the 12th house asks you for the next year and a half to learn all those bottled feelings that you've pushed to the subconscious. Maybe you can work with a psychologist or with someone. Mars rules your seventh house of help from others. Can help you bring to the surface those fears, not fears, anger, suppress anger, whatever, or ancestral past life anger. Maybe you were killed in a past lifetime or whatever. It can come to the surface to be re reworked now, intense, profound work. Also, it can mean that you're starting some initiative abroad, that you get initiate 12 houses, foreign countries, that you get, you know, either initiated into spiritual things because 12 house is spiritual, some spiritual search, some spiritual, you become very active on your meditations. Might be hard with Mars being born in your 12th house to be very present, <laughs> to be very calm, but you might be more rigorous like a soldier in your spiritual practices. Uh, and it can, but also your dreams, remember, might be more turbulent, more sexual and violent, <laughs> especially in May. Mars will be there with the North Node. And any kind of suppressed anger, pff, it's going to be pouring off of your ears, and <laughs> either in your dreams or in some way, try to get out. Uh, but it's for good to release it, you know. And let's finish about that. Maybe some big activity that's happening for you abroad where you have to mobilize your forces Maybe you can win abroad or uh, Mars is to win. Mars is to take an initiative, something to do with foreign countries and so on. But now let's get to the really interesting part for this month. The really juicy part, which is Jupiter. Um, Sun will join Jupiter. First of all, there is a new moon on the 8th of March in your sign Taurus. And it's happening within three degrees of where the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happened. You know, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happened at the end of April. And a lot of people say, well, nothing happened. 
It's going to be unfolding over 14 years. It happened in your sign. This is so rare. I mean, you're so blessed, Taurus. This is the conjunction of opportunities. Watch out my April video for more in, you know, insights. What Jupiter Uranus mean for you. It's opportunity. It's growth. It's uh, a new awakening. It's a revolution in your life. It's a sudden growth. Not like uh, it can happen so suddenly. But a lot of Taurus people said, well, nothing happened or maybe something because this conjunction needs to be activated every time over the next 14 years when it gets activated by a new moon, full moon, a transiting planet, it's gonna start giving this opportunities for you. Jupiter, Uranus opportunity of uh, knowledge, wisdom, download of information, your higher self. This is divine planets. Jupiter is angelic wisdom. Uranus is divine wisdom. So you can tap into one is fifth D Uranus is seven D information five, five Jupiter is five D information angelic worlds uh, Uranus is seven D information the Deva Chan imagine those two joining together in your sign guys you some of you might download information that will help humanity or change it in some way others might download or tap into information and possibilities and opportunities for their own personal life that will be enriching, that will be allowing them to grow and to create something stable for the next many years. And now this new moon is activating exactly for the first activation after the conjunction. So now you're going to start seeing some ideas coming to you, some opportunities uh, for new beginnings uh, to new ideas as well that you can start acting on because the conjunction happened on the 20th, on a closing, no, it was still a growing moon, I think. But now it will be the first new moon activating it. Uh, and Venus will activate it this month. So the whole month, starting from the 8th onwards till the end, planets are activating it. So new waves of opening opportunities for this abundance, for this growth, for this realizations, educational opportunities career opportunities, anything that can become a source of a lot of meaning and purpose and excitement for you for years ahead. You'll be seeing more and more seeds, you know, coming. <laughs> uh, and of course, we have Jupiter conjunct Sun in your sign, Taurus, on uh, the 18th. Fantastic. This week from the 18th till the 24th, 20, 26th, 25th. There are so many good aspects. Jupiter conjunct Sun in your sign. Jupiter conjunct Venus in your sign. That I, it's going to be fantastic. I, I advise you to do something wonderful. Um, especially on the Jupiter Sun conjunction on the 18th. Or on the Jupiter Venus conjunction in Taurus. Again in your sign on the 23rd. It's on a full moon. It can be very powerful manifestation, ritual, whatever you want. Or if you want anything beautiful that will grow. Because it's already the moon is growing from the 18th. From the 8th. So the Jupiter Sun conjunction happens on the 18th. If you want to launch a business or start some new idea. Or start some new initiative that will be blossoming and growing for years ahead. Do it in this week after the new moon, especially the 18th till the 23rd. When it's a growing moon and you have Jupiter conjunct Sun, the best planet, Jupiter conjunct, Venus conjunct Jupiter. <laughs> I mean, wow, what can you plan a great trip if you want, starting something new around that time. Or if you have no plans or not, no inspiration comes, just stay and look at the signs. You know, there might be butterflies around you. There might be <laughs> the whole forest started to sing for you. Or there might be some synchronicities where you gain something valuable, where you experience some incredible joy in your body, Jupiter, Venus, Sun. These are very benevolent high vibrational energies, kind of Zen energies, but with a dose of excitement and inspiration, not just uh, Zen like that, but like, oh, I can do everything. I believe in myself. So welcome that energy. It's energy of cornucopia, of abundance, of 
luxury, buy yourself caviar and uh, some expensive dress around that time and, and feel the abundance because you're imprinting that abundance with the planets. Of course, your abundance doesn't have to be caviar and dresses or high heels. It can be luxurious nature, uh, incredibly healthy, fresh food, something that Taurus, being a Taurus is the energy of, of so much life, that is full, full on of, of naturalness, of goodness. You know, I'll tell you an interesting thing. Occultly, uh, occultists have seen that Taurus has another planet that rules it, not just Venus. And it's a planet that takes 500 years to go around the solar system. And that's why Taurus is considered, and it's this planet that creates robustness, uh, just look at a bull and a cow and it gives longevity. And that's why many times Taurus people are strong. They have strength in them, strength in their body, in their spirit, longevity. And all this abundance, it's activated for you guys. I'm excited. Uh, so, and that's, you know, there ends with a full moon on the 23rd. Uh, not doesn't end, but there's a full moon in the 23rd in your 8th house, which is very positive full moon in Sagittarius. In your 8th house, there can be an opportunity for intimacy over the next two weeks, opportunity for uh, resolving some psychological issue, opportunities for gains through others, receiving something from another, from taxes or from your partner or from clients in some way. Uh, some deep realization psychologically as well. Uh, and it's easy and also release of something. This full moon is in your eighth house. Eighth house is where we release things, where we excrete things. Um, and Mars is helping there go again with letting go of unhealthy things. Well, Jupiter, well, the full moon in Sagittarius has only good aspects with good planets, with Venus, with Jupiter, it's an opposition, but there is this, they, they allow for the release of something. They allow for intimacy. Um, and it has a trine from Neptune as well. So it's easy. If something is blocking you, it's toxic. This full moon around the 23rd oof, can unblock it and get it out of you. And then the other next big event that's happening is that on the 25th, Jupiter is moving from your sign, but it's doing it with a bang. The last... Two weeks, the, the first three weeks of, of May, Jupiter is with Venus, with uh, the Sun, uh, with Uranus. And it's and it's implanting those themes of Jupiter in the first house for another year for you. Because it's your birthday for a, a lot of you, Taurus, now. So this abundance, these opportunities that we talked to you, they imprinted for a whole year. But Jupiter enters your second house from the 25th and slowly starts new themes for the next 12 months. Um, and okay, of course, Jupiter is opportunities, growth, realizations. The second house is your finances, your security. There will be definitely opportunities for you to grow your finances. Uh, opportunities for you to, it can happen even through mutual finances or resources because Jupiter rules your eighth house by collaborating with others or help, external help of some way that helps you grow, becoming more self-sufficient and independent materially as well uh, it can improve everything second house over the next one year it's not going to happen in one day so that would be over the next one year you can improve your tastes you can expand your tastes your taste can become a more universal second house is what you consider beautiful tasty attractive it can help you expand your vision of uh, what it is possible for you to achieve financially I remember when Jupiter was transiting my second house, money was good, but it didn't last time. The first time money grew a lot. Uh, the last time, a few, two, three years ago, I didn't make, I thought like I'd make three times as much. No, it was going really well. Uh, but I suddenly had this realization and peace of mind that no matter what happens in life, I can create my own resources because I've always had this doom and gloom because I grew up in poverty and till 30, I was pretty poor living, you know, very bad. <laughs> Don't want to go there, uh, but it's a great lesson. And even when I started after 30 till 
39, 40 to have financial stability, I still expected things. I, my stomach was on a ball always. Now I cannot be there. Like I, I'm not used to that. And when Jupiter transit is the second house, it was a great healing because I felt no matter what happens with the world, even if I lose all the money, whatever, I have my talents and I have my own resources that I can also always recreate them. So you gain higher knowledge and higher understanding about your self-worth, about your talents, the second house, about how you can always self-sustain yourself and peace of mind about finances. But I think they would grow as well over the next one year. Also, that can be a great time to do any teeth work. It tends to go well. Any improvement of your face when Jupiter, Jupiter is still in my second house from the sun. Um, I started doing like facial exercise and yoga that's been very helpful and I'm really enjoying it. And Jupiter can, you know, improve, uh, expand what you eat. Of course, you can put on weight with Jupiter in the second house, but you know, if, if you can expand to more foreign cuisine, I've been, since Jupiter went into my second house, it's still there. I've been cooking three times per week Asian. And that's not an easy thing to do, but I've really incorporated it and perfected it. So something will come to you that you, you know, about food, resources, that you'd value yourself more. You can put up your prices. You can uh, get more money because you value yourself more. Uh, your tastes will expand. It can be very good for your family and for gaining anything valuable or getting more higher perspective on values, on, on money or taking courses, Jupiter is to learn something about money, about resources, about food, about growing food and so on. This is what Jupiter will bless you for over the next year and a half. Maybe there are other stuff. I miss them. But yeah, it's it is you know, very exciting, positive things. And if you want to learn more about relationships that no one else will tell you, check out my tutorial, especially for Taurus rising or moon. You know, the Taurus rising is more likely to marry someone from abroad, for example, or someone who is um, uh, from a different social class for them. I explained this why. <laughs> and we know that the second marriage of Taurus will be very different than the first marriage of Taurus. And I explain how if there is a second marriage and what exactly to expect and how it might be even easier for Taurus. Second marriages for Taurus might be <laughs> much more gentler and, and so on. So check it out. It's just $9.99.